All right, so last week we were talking about the mole equation, okay, and how the mole equation tells us that the number of moles, n, equals mass in grams divided by molar mass in grams per mole. Okay, we looked at how to calculate molar mass, we use the numbers from the periodic table, we add them together, okay? Um, and then we can use this formula to calculate either number of moles or mass in grams, okay? So we went over this first example, which was the simplest of the four ways that I can ask you a mole equation, okay? a mole equation question, sorry. So we know the mass in this question being 90 grams, okay? We know the material is calcium chloride, which enables us to calculate its molar mass by taking the atomic mass of calcium, 40.08, there's only one calcium, so I only need one of those, plus the mass of two chlorines, 35.45 times two, because there are two of them, okay, which gave us 110.98 grams per mole, and then we were able to plug that into our formula to calculate the number of moles. Okay, so we took our 90 grams and we divided it by 110.98. Okay, and we got 0.81 moles. Okay, is that ringing a bell? Okay. Then we went over the second example. We kind of rushed it near the end. Okay. Um, so I just want to kind of run through that one again as well. So in question number two, we're looking for the mass, which means we're looking for what part of the mole equation? The small m. Small m, right. Okay, so we're looking for small m. We have n, okay, they told us that there are four and a half moles, and they tell us it's magnesium bromide. And on Friday I was saying, this is more like the way you're going to get this on a test where it's going to give you the name in words and you're going to have to make sure you drop and swap and get the formula right if necessary. Okay, so in this case I would drop and swap because it's an ionic compound and I would get MgBr2. Okay, and then I would have to calculate the molar mass, 24.31 for our magnesium plus 79.9 times 2. Okay, so we've got a molar mass there of 184.11 grams per mole. So that's the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of magnesium bromide, or one mole. Okay, so now I've got N and I've got big M. I'm looking for little m. So that means I'm going to have to manipulate the mole equation to isolate little m. So that means I've got to move big M. Rules of algebra say if I want to move something, I do the opposite. Right now, I'm dividing by big M. So I would multiply by big M. The second rule of algebra, what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'd multiply the other side by big M. And now I've manipulated it. Now I can solve for the mass of magnesium bromide in four and a half moles. So that would mean taking the 184.11, big M, and multiplying it by N, 4.5. Okay, because if this is the mass of one mole, and I've got four and a half moles, it makes sense to multiply. Okay, so 828.50. grams would be my mass of four and a half moles of magnesium bromide. Okay, is that ringing a bell from Friday? Okay, there are two more ways for me to ask a mole equation question. These two ways involve using Avogadro's number. Okay. So Avogadro's number is that 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number we were talking about. Okay. It is the number of particles in one mole. So the next two questions are going to ask you to calculate one of two things. They may ask you to calculate the number of molecules in a certain mass 
of a material. Okay? Or they could give you the number of particles and ask you to calculate the mass. Okay? So it's like the inverse of each other. Right? They work just like these two, but they have one extra step. Either multiplying or dividing by Avogadro's number, whichever is appropriate for the situation. Okay? So I'm going to remind you what we talked about on Friday, which was that Avogadro's number works like a dozen. Okay, one mole is like one dozen. A mole is always that many. A dozen is always 12. Okay, so if I have 24 eggs, how many dozen do I have? Two. All right, so if I gave you a number of molecules and wanted to know how many moles that was, what would you divide by? Right? If I give you the number of molecules, and this is the number of molecules in one mole, if I divide by that, I get the number of moles. In the same way that when you went 24 divided by 12 and got 2, you figured out how many dozen you had in 24. Okay? This works the same way. If I gave you a big number, 7.5 times 10 to the 25, if you divide it by that number, you'll get the number of moles. Okay? Similarly, if I told you I had three dozen donuts, Okay, you would calculate how many donuts I have by multiplying 3 by 12. Okay, so if I wanted you to calculate the number of molecules in 3 moles, you would take this number and multiply it by 3. Okay, everybody with me there? So we treat it just like we treat 12 when we're dealing with dozens. All right. Copy this one down. This is the first example of using Avogadro's number. Okay, so this question wants to know how many molecules. All right, so. Okay, that's number of molecules, not hashtag molecules, so there's no confusion. Okay, that number, that symbol used to stand for number. I don't know how it got so different. Anyway, okay, I'm looking for the number of molecules. I, what do I know if they tell me 600 grams? Small n, right, mass is always in grams. Okay, and what does silver nitrate help me calculate? Big N. Big N, right, okay, the molar mass. They tell me the material, but they told it to me in words, which means I've gotta make sure that I get the formula right. Silver is Ag, nitrate is NO3. Silver is a plus one, nitrate's a minus one, so that compound is okay the way I have it written. Now I can figure out its molar mass. So silver is like 107, eight, seven. Okay, and there's only one silver. How many nitrogens are there? Just one. How many oxygens are there? Three, right? Okay, so 16 times three. All right, so 107.87 plus 14.01 plus 48. 169.88. Okay, so I'm looking for the number of molecules. I have little m and big M. What can I calculate with those two numbers? What's the other part of the mole equation? N, yeah, I can calculate N with those two numbers because N equals little m over big M. Now you're probably saying to yourself, self, that's not what the question wants me to find. The question wants me to find the number of molecules. Yes, it does. But you need the number of moles to get there. Okay? Because if I know the number of moles, and Avogadro's number tells me the number of particles in a mole, when I multiply those numbers together, I will get the number of molecules. 
So I've got to calculate n, the number of moles, first. Okay, so I just plug in my numbers. 600 grams divided by 169.88. And that's grams per mole. All right, so 3.53 moles. All right, so I know that there are 3.53 moles of silver nitrate in the 600 gram sample they gave me. I also know that Avogadro's number is the number of molecules in one mole. So if I want to find the number of molecules in 3.53 moles, I take this number and I multiply it by this number. In the same way that if I asked you how many um, donuts there were in 3.53 dozens, you would multiply 12 by 3.53. Okay? I don't know, somebody would have a half-eaten donut then, but still. Okay? Everybody follow me there? Okay. So I'm going to take that number to get the number of molecules Okay, I'm going to go abs number times n, okay, times the number of moles. That will get me the number of molecules. So that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times 3.53. Now, should I use this rounded value or should I use the big number that's in my calculator? The big number, the big number in my calculator. It's way more accurate. Okay, so I want to use all these decimal places. Why? Because I'm multiplying by a huge number. And all those decimal places are going to play a part. Okay, if I round this off, I'm going to get a very different number than I should. Okay, so I'm just going to take that number and I'm going to multiply it by Avogadro's number, which remember we type in in brackets, 6.02. And then you use uh, your exponent button. If you have a TI, it's second and the comma. You get an E, and then you go 23. Okay. So, in 600 grams of silver nitrate, there are 2.13 times 10 to the 24 molecules of silver nitrate. Okay, I'm only going to keep two decimal places for my final answer. I'm not going to write all of them down. Okay, for my final answer, I'm going to round it down to two decimal places. Does that answer make sense? Is it bigger than Avogadro's number? It is. That makes sense. It should be the number in three and a half moles. Okay, so it should be bigger. Okay, questions there? So a question like this would be one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks. Okay. Questions there? All right, let's give this one a try. So now, I'm giving you the number of molecules. Now I want the mass, so backwards of what we just did. Okay, so write this one down and then we'll walk through it. So for this one, they want me to find the mass. If I'm going to find little m, I'm going to need n, and I'm going to need big M. Agreed? I need the, the other two parts of the mole equation. This question gives me the material, diphosphorus tetraiodide, so P2I4, and it tells me the number of molecules. And that is 1.54 times 10 to the 25. Is that more or less than one mole? More. Way more. Okay? All right. So if I know those things, what can I calculate right now if I know P2I4? Is that more or less than 
It's going to get big M if I know the formula. Okay, that's the first thing I should do then. Okay, so for phosphorus, we got 30.97. Yeah, and there's two of them, so I've got to multiply that by two. And I've got four iodines, so that's what, 126.9. Times four. Okay, seven hundred and sixty nine point five four grams per mole. Okay, if I want to get little m, I need the number of moles. I need n. I have the number of molecules, and I also have this. In one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So, can I use that number and the number of molecules to get the number of moles? How would I do it? I am going to divide. Yeah, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to divide it by this number. That will get me n. Okay, because remember, number of moles is like number of dozen. Okay, if I told you I had 48 eggs, you divide 48 by 12 to tell me how many dozen. Okay, so I've got 1.54 times 10 to the 25 molecules. Okay, and in one mole there are this many molecules. So if I want to calculate n, I take the number of molecules. And I divide by Ab's number. Okay, so that would look like this. 1.54 times 10 to the 25 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. calculator is the number on the top in brackets 1.54 e25 divided by Avogadro's number also in brackets 6.02 e23 all right so it's 25.58 moles that makes sense it was a much bigger number than one mole okay it's 25.58 moles Okay, so now I know N. Since I now know N and I know big M, can I calculate mass? I can. Okay, now I go back to the mole equation. N equals little m over big M, and I solve for little m. So multiply both sides by big M, and I got little m. So that's going to be... 769.54, that's the mass of one mole, times the number of moles, 25.58, with all the decimals. Okay. include that here. Okay, is that a lot of grams? It is. It's like almost 20 kilograms of this stuff. But I have a lot of it. I have 25 and a half moles of it. It would have a big mass. Okay, so um, 19,685.9 grams. Okay. All right, there are only four ways I can ask you a mole equation question. You have now seen all four. Okay. There are no tricks that I can play at this point on you. Okay. You have seen all four ways that I can do a mold equation question. What we're going to do every day this week 
except Thursday when we do the unit exam review, okay, is I'm going to put four of these on the board and we're going to go through them. So you will have four examples of each of the four ways that I can ask you a mole equation question before the exam. Okay. And we've seen it done that many times, possibly more. All right. Questions on those? Okay, I'm going to give you about a three minute break, and then I'm going to have you try some of these on your own. Okay. okay, so for number one, we're looking for how many moles? So we're looking for N. They tell us the mass, 150 grams. And they tell us it's carbon dioxide. So that's CO2. Okay, and so when I'm calculating the molar mass of that, okay, that's going to be 12.01, because there's only one carbon, plus 16 times 2. So that should give us 44.01 grams per mole for our molar mass. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right, so I'm looking for N. The mole equation says that N equals little m over big M, and I have both of those things, so all I have to do is plug in my numbers. He told me the mass was 150 grams, divided by 44.01 grams per mole. Okay, so we're looking at 3.41 moles. On that one? All right, how many people have done the second one? Okay. Well, let's have a look at the second one real quick and then I'll give you some time on the third and fourth. Okay, so for number two, we're looking for the mass of 26 and a half moles. So they told us the, they told us N, 26.5 moles, and they told me it's cobalt 2 bromide. So that's CO2 plus bromine minus 1. So when I drop and swap, I'm going to get COBr2. Okay, so cobalt is 58.93. And there's only one. Plus 2 bromines, which is 79.9 times 2. Okay, so 218.73 grams per mole. All right, so now that I've got the molar mass, okay, I'm supposed to find little m, which means I'm going to have to manipulate the mole equation for a little m, which just means multiplying both sides by big M. Okay, now that I've got that, I just need to plug in my numbers. So 218.73 times 26 and a half. Okay, so we got 5,796.35. Same as the first four we went over? Okay. Okay, keep going on three and four. All right, so for number three, we're looking for the number of molecules in uh, 29 grams of sodium sulfide. Okay, so sodium sulfide is an ionic compound. Sodium is a plus one. Sulfur is a minus two. So we're looking at Na2S, which will be 22.99 times two, because there's two sodiums, plus 32.07 for the one sulfur that we have there. 
So we got 78.05 grams per mole. Okay, so I've got little m and I've got big M. What can I calculate if I have those two things? N. n. All right, so that's my next step to calculate N because if I have N, I can use N and Avogadro's number to get the number of molecules, which in the end is what I'm looking for. Okay, so N equals little m over big M, so that'll be 29 grams divided by 78.05, so I have less than a mole. Okay, so I've got 0.37 moles. Okay, and now that I know N, I can calculate the number of molecules because I know the number of molecules in one mole and I know the number of moles. So N times Av's number will get me the number of molecules. So I take my 0.37 and I multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So we're looking at 2.24 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Okay. How many people have done number four? Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes to work on number four, and then we'll go over that one. Let's have a look at this one. So in this one, they tell us the number of molecules. Okay, and it's 7.2 times 10 to the 23. Now, I'm supposed to find the mass. If I want the mass, if I want little m, then I'm going to need n and I'm going to need big M. Okay, so this is the number of molecules I have. And this... is the number of molecules in one mole. So if I want to get the number of moles, what do I do with the 7.2 times 10 to the 23 and the 6.02 times 10 to the 23? I divide them, right? Okay. If I divide the number of molecules I have by the number of molecules in one mole, I'll be left with the number of moles, n. Okay, so that's my next step. I want to calculate n. It's going to be 7.2 times 10 to the 23, divided by 6.02, times 10 to the 23. Okay, and if you know your math, you know you can shortcut on this one. Because the exponents are the same, you don't have to put in the exponents. You can just go 7.2 divided by 6.02. Okay, so 1.19, actually 1.196, Okay, so I, now I have N. The other thing they told me in the question was that it was diphosphorus pentaoxide, P2O5. Okay, so that's going to be 30.97 times 2, my 2 phosphorus, plus 16 times 5. Okay, that would be my 5 oxygens. So 141.94 grams per mole. All right, so I've calculated N, I've calculated big M. Now I can use the mole equation to get little m. Okay, whoops, sorry, Let's start like this. N equals little m over big M. I want to get little m by itself, so I multiply both sides by big M. So that'll mean 141.94, big N, times N, 1.196, and I'll have my mass. Okay, 
So 169.76 grams. Those ones are the trickiest. Okay, the fourth type is the trickiest. Questions on those? All right. So I'm going to put a few up on the board here that I want you to try. Wording's a little bit different, just so you get the hang of ones with different wording. Um, reminder that uh, tomorrow your labs are due. I'm going to forgo a quiz. Okay. I want to have another couple of days under our belt before I quiz you on mold equation. Thursday definitely happens. Okay. Now, that's going to be a bit tricky because you also have your reactions assignment on Thursday. So don't leave that till the last minute. Okay. Make sure you're getting that done before then because you can certainly hand it in to me early. I'd be happy to take it. All right. Just so you're aware, guys, if you're wanting to do a little bit of this, of practicing this stuff at home, I have posted the keys, okay, for all of the mole equation worksheets in the same place I post all the other keys on Google Classroom, which is not on the right screen. Yes, it's me. Oh, no, everyone saw that my password is a bunch of dots. Okay. Um, so, it is going to be in the class work tab and it is going to be here under worksheet packages and other materials. If you click on that, okay, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, so you'll have to just click view assignment to see it all. But mole equation worksheets and keys okay, is in there. It's a PDF with my chicken scratch. Okay, but it's all in there uh, if you need to see it. Okay. Um, so all the answers are there to those things. Okay. Um, and there's also another worksheet in the worksheet booklet, but it has the answers with it already. So you won't find the answers in this document. You'll actually find it in your workbook in boldface print at the end of each question. All right. So you can try those and, and see how you do with those. Like I said, I think we'll, we'll go without a quiz for tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then we'll kind of get back into that on Thursday. Okay, make sure you're getting your lab report done for tomorrow, your assignment done for Thursday. Okay, so I can get those marked and back to you and you can use them to study for your exam on Monday. Okay. Okay. All right, we need to go over these three. Yes, no? Okay, all right, let's have a look at uh, 3B here. So they tell us we have 4.2 moles. So they told us N. Okay, anything in moles is N, okay? And they tell us it's carbon dioxide. So we can calculate big M, and that's gonna be 44.01, because we've got 12.01 and two oxygens, which is 32. Okay, we add those together, we get 44.01 grams per mole. Okay, so if we wanna find the mass, okay, N equals little m over big M, Okay, so we multiply both sides by big M, and we've got M, and now we can solve by going uh, 44.01 times 4.2. Okay, so 184.84 grams. Okay, for 3B, and then for 3D, it's basically the same thing. We're still gonna use this manipulation of the formula. It's just that this time N is 36.8 moles, and we're dealing with magnesium chloride, so that'll be 24.31 plus 35.45 times two, so there's my two chlorines. That's my magnesium there. So we're looking at 95.21 grams per mole. So now that we know N and big M, we just plug them in 
to this formula here. So we'll have uh, 95.21 times 36.8. All right, so we're looking at 3,503.73 grams for that one. All right, now number five is more like our third example, okay, where we have to use Avogadro's number in order to calculate the number of molecules. Okay, so we know the mass. We know little m. It's 1,000 grams. We know it's water. Okay, so H2O, so that's going to be 1.01 times 2, our two hydrogens, plus 1 oxygen is 18.02 grams per mole. Okay, so now that I've got little m and big M, I can calculate the number of moles. Okay, so that'll be 1,000 grams, that's 1 liter of water, by the way, okay, divided by 18.02. Okay, so we got 55.49 moles. Okay, so now I have the number of moles, and I know that Avogadro's number tells me the number of molecules in one mole. So what do I do with those two numbers? So this is the number of moles. This is the number of molecules in one mole, and I'm looking for the number of molecules in this many moles. So what do I have to do with those two numbers? Times them, yeah, I need the number to get bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna take N and multiply it by Avogadro's number. All right, so we're looking at 3.34 times 10 to the 25. Okay, do you suppose I will ask you each of the four ways on the unit example? Yeah. I absolutely will. Okay, so make sure you know all four ways to do a mole equation problem. All right, uh, we got 123. You know what? I'll give you the rest of class to work on either your lab report or your reactions assignment. You got about seven or seven minutes or so. so make sure you use your time to do it. Yeah.
So the same same procedure. Like you know, it's the answer. I just go to the
Yeah. It's, it's fine. Because it says what happens in a reaction. So if it's fine, this happens in a reaction. Yeah. So let me talk about what you say. So, go to the observation. Do it over just as we do in the back. And then before and after. And before they were both clear liquids. This is now what
We thought they were going to be double replacement reactions, but they didn't make that big. This is part of what happened. But I said, I think you have to. A minute. That's fine. But I need, I want the whole reaction. Can you come over here? All the products. There's two more products. Okay, he's in the recording for the analysis. Like I basically, here it is, here's how you find the other two things. Here it is, here's how you find the other two things. Okay, and you might be done. Well, we're going to do anything with the edge stone products for those two. All right, okay, then you can say that. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do, right? I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. It is. It's, it's, it's got a nothing on Yes. So I was trying to find the calculations for the whole trip. She was pointing to this out as your calculations for the whole trip. There's no angle on the stretches. And I don't see any calculations for this total displacement. And I don't see where you measured that. Good stretch. Good stretch. Okay. I guess I think this is your total time calculation. And that would fit with how you would calculate this. But it just, it just seemed like I couldn't really track where it was. Okay. 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 Controlled variables, you're basically listing a bunch of materials. Which I don't think you can say is three separate. Um, but you mentioned here about squeezing the eye dropper and getting the substance inside. This amount of the substance kind of control? No. Yeah. Yeah. So I would add that in there and explain why. Water. 
so yeah, this isn't what actually happened. This is what we might have predicted, but it's not what happened. Yeah.